Uh, we want to welcome again every single person that is in this place to Hungry Generation. Those of you that are watching online, we want to welcome you and we hope that you feel that you are a part of a family because we are a family of God and we know that you came here tonight. God will speak to you and God is already speaking something. We believe that you will be blessed, healed and delivered as you leave this place. Amen church? Amen. Tell your neighbor you're at the right place at the right time. I want you to say it again. You're at the right place at the right time. Amen, amen, amen. So this evening I just want to take a little bit of your time to be able to speak to you on a few things, a few principles from the Bible. And we believe um, as we share the word from, as we share a few principles from the word of God, it will begin to change your life and it influence you to become a better person in your community, in your schools, in the world, in the world at large. Amen, church? There was this man that was born and grew up in a village and he was always his life in a village. I grew up in a village in Ukraine. I was born in Ukraine. We're in the village. So every time we would come to a city, there would be so many things that are different that we never saw. And there was this man that always grew up in a village and this one time he was invited to come visit his family in the city. So he comes, he comes to a city with his wife and the kid and they're just watching all these buildings. I mean, they always grew up in this small little shack, you know, never like only he had to climb to the roof. But he comes to the city and he sees his buildings, everything's so glamorous. He just doesn't, he's so oh, like in awe. So he comes to this big story, big building apartment and he walks in through the first doors and then he's standing there with his son and his wife. And he sees these metal doors and those metal doors they open up and he sees this old lady just walks in through those doors the doors close and he hears this bell bang the doors open again he sees this young beautiful woman just walks out of this door he's like wow he turns to his son he says son take your mother in there <laughs> So when you grow up in the village, when you grow up in the village, when you grow up in this um, set of mindsets where you are used to one thing, it's so hard for you to change and understand something new, something that God has. And this, this evening, I just want you to, if you have your Bibles, I want you to open to Romans 12, 12 verse 2. If you didn't bring your Bible, uh, we have it here on the screen. And it says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. It says do not be conformed. This basically means that do not be do not be conformed. It's like it's a complete change but do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It basically talks about the renewing of your mind as a complete change of mindset. That if we in this world, the world thinks about certain things one way the bible says that do not be conformed to this world but be be transformed by the renewing of your mind be thinking in a different way whatever you grew up with whatever you were taught whatever maybe your parents have told you is one way of thinking but the word of god says that we need to renew our minds not to the world standards but to according to the word of god amen and as you are as you renew your mind you are able to understand the good the acceptable and the perfect will of God unless you renew your mind unless you change your mind you will not be able to understand the good the acceptable and the perfect will of God for your life tell your neighbor renew your mind turn your to other neighbor tell him renew your mind and this is this evening we're just going to talk on a short topic called how to change your attitude. Uh, we believe that you should be taking your taking notes. Note takers are history makers. So if you have your phone, if you have your notebook, take them out. And I uh, want you to be writing the few points that we're going to be going over. Because we believe that as you hear it, that word of God will begin to come into your heart and begin to change your life. What is an attitude? An attitude is a settled way of thinking or feeling about someone or something. Typically one that is reflected in the person's behavior. That is what an attitude is. 
have a question for you tonight. Do you think you have a godly attitude or a worldly attitude? Do you think you have a godly attitude or a worldly attitude? We all have friends that have bad attitude, right? Every single person in this place has a person or a, that we know that have a terrible attitude. Turn to your neighbor and ask them, are you the one? <laughs> or should I look for another? <laughs> we all have people in our lives that have godly attitudes. And we have people in our lives whose attitudes just are, they stink. Every time that person comes into the room and everybody knows, don't get this person mad because your day will be ruined. We have those people, right? We also have a certain things in our lives that if you touch that area of my life, you will just get me upset. For men, it's usually food. Jeez, I don't even know why, but it's just such a touchy subject that it's just, <laughs> God help us all. And we all have these, these people or we even ourselves know of a place where we're weak, where, we're, where our attitude fails us, where we just begin to, we begin to break down and we give in to our feelings, we give in to our emotions and we are no longer ruled by what the word of God says but by our emotions because we know emotions are like waves. They go up one day, they go down the other. You wake up on the wrong side of the bed, your day is ruined. You ask for a, a, a cold coffee, they give you hot and that that's it your life is downhill that is our feelings that is our attitude many times and we begin to attach our attitudes to what we feel but the word of God what we read here in Romans 12 verse 2 says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind and renew our mind through the word of God John Maxwell said that attitude is the advanced man of a truth of our true selves your attitude goes before you. It is our best friend and our worst enemy. It is more honest and consistent than our words. It is the thing that draws people or repels them from us. It is never content unless it is expressed. It is the speaker of our present and it is a prophet of our future. Bad attitudes, bad attitude is like a flat tire. Unless you change it, you will not get anywhere in life. Bad attitudes is, is like this. Good, I'm not going to mention other examples, but let's stick to the flat tire. <laughs> just want to keep it PG. <laughs> it's like a flat tire. And we all know flat tires, they just, they can't get you anywhere until you fix that. And that is with life. And we, I remember one time, it's just that. Whenever I have a bad attitude, I cannot accomplish anything throughout that day. I mean, I'm telling you, everything that I do, it does not prosper. Like, you know the scripture that says that everything that your hand touches will prosper? With bad attitude, everything that your hand touches will not prosper. And it's like, when you have bad attitude, you know, you try to go to work and it's just a pencil falls and that's it. Hell, hell breaks loose. You're driving and somebody's driving 30 on a 30 mile road and you are just enraged because they should be going two miles over the speed limit. It's just when you have bad attitude, it affects every area of your life. And unless you change your bad attitude, you will not get anywhere in life. When you have bad attitude, you will cancel the future that God has for you. Bad attitude, it derives you from that road and that path to your destiny that God has prepared for you. We have to understand that attitude is, is something that it comes before God and God just, it, it pushes you away from God. And one thing that we have to all understand is that God chooses what we go through, but we choose how we go through it. God chooses how uh, through what I go through. I choose how I go through it. I choose how we go through it. So it is very important to understand that 
You know, not everybody is born with a golden spoon in their mouth. Not everybody's born in a palace. Not everybody's born where things are perfect. But we choose how we go through it. Maybe for some of us, the road is much harder than others. But we determine by our attitude how we live our life. Is our life going to be blessed or is our life going to be cursed? Are we going to be on the top or are we going to be on the bottom? Our attitude determines our altitude how far we go in life bad attitudes are like flat tires unless you change it you will not go anywhere in life Thomas Jefferson said this that nothing can stop the man with the right mental attitude from achieving his goal and nothing on earth can help the man with the wrong mental attitude nothing can help the man on earth who has the wrong attitude I just want to go right now uh, for a few simple truths from the Bible that we want to know and be able to see how can we change our attitude. How can we live a life where we achieve and we accomplish the goals and the dreams and we get to the destiny that God has prepared for us. How many of you guys want to achieve what God has in store for you? Come on put your hands together for Jesus. If you're the one say I'm the one. Come on say with faith I'm the one few truths I want you to write down. Number one is we choose our attitude. We choose our attitude. There was this man called Victor M. L. Franklin. This is his picture. Um, and it was in a time where the Hitler was in power and he was in... Um, he was one of them, he was one of the people that was in a concentration camp and it was during the time where the Nazis murdered and killed six million Jews. Um, they murdered his mother, they murdered his wife and his brother and only him and his sister was left to be alive and they put him in a concentration camp to work at uh, these conditions and one thing that he said during that time, he said, I choose to suffer with dignity and regardless what the Nazis do to me, I will never hate one of them. I choose to suffer with dignity and regardless what the Nazis do to me, I will never hate one of them. I mean, if you think during that time, he was put into concentration camp when they murdered his mother, they killed his wife. Six million of, of his people were just wiped out of this earth. And during that time, he had every reason to be, to be negative, every reason to have the worst attitude possible. But he, he said with these words that I choose to suffer with dignity this is why we say that we choose our attitude your attitude is a choice it is not what happens to you it is not what you go through that determines your attitude you have the choice to make your life the best or you have the choice to make your life a living hell the choice is up to you they may have defeated him physically but they did not defeat him spiritually that's something that could not be taken away. It was his faith. And we, uh, he was, after uh, he was released from the concentration camp, he went on to write uh, bestseller books in New York Times and um, became a motivational speaker. And he died about 1998 being a, one of the, being a successful man because of his attitude. And many of his peers and many of his friends, they died in the concentration camp because of the hurt, because of the pain. They just couldn't handle what was happening to them. And they just, they just lost hope. They lost every courage that possible that they could have. And they just died in that concentration camp. Whereas he went on living a successful life and made history. We choose our attitude. Tell your neighbor, I choose my attitude. Tell your other neighbor, I choose my attitude. Number two is attitudes are not caused by people or circumstances. Attitudes are not caused by people or circumstances. And one of the biggest myths I want you to write down, I want you to memorize it, is that if my circumstances were different, I would have a better attitude. That's one of the biggest lies the enemy could ever give you. If my circumstances were better, I would, I would, I would just 
be better. I would smile. I would have a better attitude at my work. If only my, my boss would give me a promotion, I would just, I'll be the best worker that there is. If only, you know, God gave me a reason to praise him. Only if God healed me, I would just worship God all night long. If only my family was saved, I will not be so depressed. If only, if only, if only, but that is the light of the enemy because Satan wants to make you to live a life that is not content. Satan wants to make you believe if only you can reach another level you'll be better so you're always not satisfied you're always not grateful you can never raise your hands and say God I thank you for healing me even though the the, the signs of sickness is yet in my body Satan wants to make you say that you shouldn't raise your hands because you have lack you can't raise your hands and say God you will supply according you supply all my needs according to your riches and glory because you still don't have means Satan wants to to make you believe that until you reach another level then you will be content then you'll be happy and that is the biggest lie I remember when I, I had I had um I had opportunity to live in Nigeria for for a couple of years and <laughs> just thinking back some of the things that that I would that you know that I went through to to some it's a normal thing to me you know um I grew up in Ukraine I grew up on the farm without no rhythm <laughs> and <laughs> I grew up I grew up in Ukraine <laughs> and then and then I came to America so then um I've been kind of Americanized I've been a little bit of um if I can say just just kind of washed by this whole comfort about about Starbucks about gym about sauna about the good life you know you know what I'm saying so then I go back to Nigeria thinking you know man I got this I you know I grew up in Ukraine I I, I, I can do this I can do this so I go there and then just the weather itself. The moment you step into the airport, it's just the weather hits you. It's so humid. Your clothes stick to you. You stretch your hand and then your skin just sticks to you. It's just, that one thing was just, okay. The food, they, then we come to the food. And you know, man's biggest weakness is food. When you take food from man, you basically defeated the man. <laughs> and that was so hard for me to, to um, to just to, to go through it. And I remember at a certain point, I was like, what the heck did I get myself in? At times I was just crying in my bed. I'm like, I said to my family, peace. You know, I'm not, I'm leaving you guys. They're like, when are you coming back? I don't know. You know, trying to be this, I don't know. And then I, I go there and then I'm here and they're like, how long are you going to stay here? I'm like, I want to go back. But I already made this step so I can't call my family and just like, hey guys, rescue me. You know, I'm, I'm dying here. This weather, the food, everything was just getting to me. And at one point, I just decided, you know what? I'll make the best out of it. They're going to give me rice. I'm, I'll make it the best rice I've ever ate. You come to, you come to the kitchen and like, how do you want your rice? Do you want it cold? Do you want it hard? Do you want it uncooked? Whatever's available. Just give it to me. <laughs> and, you know, I live, and some of the best memories, some of the best thing in life happened to me in that area at that time where I lived in Nigeria. Some of the most changing times where I lived in Africa transformed my relationship with God where, where right now I wouldn't be the man that I am if I didn't go through that. But now we come back here to America and I'll go to a place like Subway and and there would be, I'm like, I just want a sandwich. Give me a sandwich. I'm hungry. I have 30 minutes, you know, make it snappy, make it fast. <laughs> and this lady, <laughs> I just don't know what happened with her. I was like, you have only one job to cut the bread. And <laughs> you can't cut the bread, you know, just squeeze the bread so hard down. It's like one millimeter thin. I'm like, how can I eat that? And I remember that day, it was, I remember clearly like yesterday because it was something that God, God really spoke to me through that. Where I was just in, in that subway and I was just holding it in. I was just, God, give me patience. She's just squeezing that bread down and just <laughs> cutting it. And the bread is ripping. And the bread is just being torn apart. And they're like, oh, don't worry. She's new today. I'm like, <laughs> I could tell. She's just, she gets through one bread, rips it like into pieces. I'm like, no problem. I'll wait. I only have 20 minutes. So she takes a second bread and she just squeezed it down just starts cutting it it just rips it apart I'm like can somebody help her cut the bread <laughs> and I was so mad at that point I remember I was just my mind was just running like crazy like a thousand words was just going through my mind I remember leaving that restaurant and I was just driving I was just my day was just like wow I remember God just hear God clearly speak to me saying you are just so ungrateful 
and just hit me how how these little things just ruined my day I just didn't want to speak to anyone I don't want to do anything everything was just uproar and my life at that point was just based my attitude was based on a piece of bread that somebody couldn't cut I remember God just just hit me so hard that I was just like man I need to change my attitude yes you cannot cut bread but it shouldn't depend on that my attitude my life with God shouldn't be depending on somebody's outcome somebody cuts you off on the freeway somebody doesn't say the right thing at church and that's it we hope we go that's our life is just a mess that we choose our attitude and that our circumstances they do not dictate how our attitude should be if your neighbor has hurt you or offended you or called you a wrong name that should not base your relationship with God that shouldn't dictate on how you should live your life life if somebody has hurt you in your past somebody has maybe abused somebody may called you names or cheated you that does not mean you have the right to live your life in unforgiveness in regret in shame or all that because we choose our attitude we do not choose what we go through but we choose and how do we come out of it we choose to forgive we choose to let go we choose to leave those things behind because we are not conformed to this world but we are transformed by the renewal of our mind we renew our mind according to what God says about us we are who God says that we are we can do what God says that we can do and we have what God says that we have come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ and I, I, I'll prove you from the scriptures we have the perfect example Adam and Eve they were created at the most perfect place they had the most perfect bodies they lived a life where they walked with God and yet they were ungrateful. God gave him one command said you have everything everything's perfect I'm living with God I'm I'm walking with you you guys have a perfect life but just don't eat out of that out of that tree yet they were ungrateful and they were rebellious and they lost their uh, heaven place they lost their the garden of Eden so you cannot say that if my life was perfect I'll have the best attitude because Adam and Eve proves that it's not so we also see in the, in the life of King David we see that King David at the worst time of his life has the best attitude where his friends betray him when Saul is trying to kill him where, where everything just turns against him where his kingdoms getting taken away from him and that is where we read in Psalms where where David at the most hardest part of his life has the best attitude so you cannot say that look if I have a better life if God can only just take this away I would, I'll praise him or I'll worship him more I'll give him more of my time I will attend to church more if only I have a car if only I have a better job I'll start live, loving God because King David proves otherwise we see also in King David's life when everything was great with everything was good that's where David begins to misbehave and that's where he comes in commits sin with Bathsheba so King David proves that at the worst time of your life you can have the best attitude but also when everything is going good you can also have the worst attitude. So we choose our attitude and it's not our circumstances that dictate how and what kind of attitude we should have. We also see in the life of Apostle Paul he goes preaching to one city and um, the city comes in an uproar and they they take they beat him and they put him in the prison and after they beat him put him in the prison he begins to give worship service to God he begins to praise God say God I thank you after they've been beaten after they've been scourged after they've just been thrown out of the city Paul decides to have a worship service and begins to thank God these biblical characters they prove to us that we do not to have we don't need to have a better life in order for us to have a better attitude if you see the life of Job Job has the worst circumstances and outcome you can possibly think of yet he was able to get on on his knees when everybody even his wife came and said curse God what it was that you're you're mad just curse God he was able to get on his knees and said God gives and God takes away blessed be his name we choose our attitude we choose how we go through it God chooses our circumstances but we choose the outcomes of that number three God rewards good attitude and disciplines bad attitude God rewards good attitude and disciplines bad attitude 
You have to get one thing in your mind. You have to understand it clearly that God is madly in love with you. God just loves you so much. There's nothing that you can do. There's nothing that you can say that will change his unfailing love for you. There's nothing that you can do. You have to understand that part. But God rewards good attitude and he disciplines bad attitude. And we read in, in scripture in James 4, 6, if you can put up that scripture. It says, God resists the proud but gives grace to the humble. Pride, pride is an attitude. God says, God resists that. God loves you so much that he's able to discipline you when you are proud. He loves you so much because God knows that, look, if you're walking on the wrong path, he's not going to just stand there and watch you get burned. God is going to discipline you so you can grow and so you can get better. Any person that pats you on the back when you're doing right, when you're doing wrong, doesn't love you. Any person that pats you on the back or doesn't do anything when you're going the wrong direction, those are the people that don't love you and you should stay far and far from them. God is so madly in love with you that he says that God resists the proud. God is just, but he gives grace to the humble. If we have good attitude, if we choose the right attitude, God says, I will reward you for that. But if we have bad attitude, God will discipline. God will create certain circumstances that we can learn, that we can be able to grow and become mature Christians. Because God did not create us to be spectators. God created us to be fighters for his kingdom. God created us so we can become mature. That when we grow in in him that we'll be able when circumstances come against us that we're not going to whine and cry that we're going to pick up the armor of God and fight against the enemy. God wants to discipline us in our attitude when they're bad so we can become a mature Christian that we know where stand and we can become his kingdom and we can rule and reign on this earth. Amen church? And even if you read just a few verses down in verse 10 where God says, humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and he will lift you up. God simply says, look, if you choose the right attitude, I'll pick you up. I'll make you the head and not the tail. If you choose to do right, I'll make you the one that is on top and not on the bottom. That everything that your hand touches will prosper. I will lift you up. God is committed to your success if you choose the right attitude. And number four is good attitude lead to success and favor and bad attitude brings failure and and disfavor good attitude leads to success and favor bad attitude brings failure and disfavor we see a famous story in the bible when the canaanite woman comes to jesus christ and he's, he and she starts just crying out to jesus christ said Look, my daughter is possessed and Jesus, please help her. At this point, you would think a person, she's humble, man. She's coming to Jesus. She's just crying out. She's disturbing Jesus. First thing Jesus does is just, Jesus ignores her. And if you think at this point that this is not bad enough, Jesus goes on to not just to ignore her. Jesus goes, says, that, look, I'm not sent to help you. First time Jesus ignores her, then he says, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not supposed to help you. I'm, I'm not sent for you. At that point, Jesus, she still continues to have the best attitude. Jesus, please have mercy on me. Please have mercy. Then Jesus turns around one more time. And at the point, he, he just says, you know, you're not supposed to take the bread from the children and toss it to the dogs. Basically, Jesus just offends her. At that point, you would think that, man, this woman's going to lose it. This woman's going to explode, you know. But yet, at the same point, she has a humble attitude. And she says, even the dogs. Maybe, yeah, maybe I am a dog. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I am a dog. But even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from the table. At that point, she chooses, even from Jesus, she chooses, I'm going to have the right attitude. I'm going to have the best attitude. And that's where Jesus says, your faith has saved you. That's where Jesus picks her up and he begins to reward for her humble attitude. We, whatever that we're going through, maybe you did not choose your circumstances. Maybe you were born in the wrong family that you, you, nothing was going right. Maybe you are, you know, there's pain in your body. Maybe there's circumstances that point you to act like the world. 
but we choose our attitude. We choose to, to transform and renew our mind according to the Word of God. What the Word of God says that I am who God says I am. I'm not my past. I'm not my mistake. I'm not what my parents called me. I'm not what my teachers say I am, but I am what God's Word says. I can do what God says I can do. I'm not yesterday's mistake. I am today's victor. Um, whatever my hand touches will prosper and I have what God says I have. We have to base our attitude according to the Word of God. We see in the life of Joseph, when Joseph begins to bring bread to, to his brothers and his brothers sell him into slavery. They basically just strip him the clothes, tie him and just slave him to slavery. And you think, okay, Joseph is just, man, things are just not working out. I mean, you, you thought being ignored from your, from your brothers is bad. Try being sold to slavery for, by your own family. That's just, that's just terrible. After being sold into slavery, he goes to work in the Potiphar's house, you know, and then from then on he gets lied against, he gets tossed into prison. Once he's in prison, you know, he gets, he, he helps people out, he gets forgotten. And you think at that point he would just have the worst attitude. But yet he based his attitude according to God's word. He based his attitude that instead of, you know, be having the spirit of heaviness, but like in Isaiah 61 verse 3 says that put on the garment of praise. He was encouraging himself that, you know, that maybe things are not working out, but I can do all things through Christ that gives me strength. Maybe I have lack at this moment, but my, my Bible says that I, the Lord will supply all my needs according to his riches and to his glory. Maybe I'm not accepted by, by my family, by my friends. Maybe I'm rejected. Maybe I'm sold into slavery, but the word of God says that I am the apple of his eye. I'm so precious to him that something touches me that offends God. I am a chosen generation. I am a royal royal priesthood I am who God says I am I can do what God says I can do and not I will not be conformed to this world I'm not going to base my my attitude of what the world says I'm not going to base my attitude of past my mistakes on what I've done yesterday or what I left undone I am who God says I am I can do what God says I can do and I have what God says I have come on put your hands together for Jesus Christ and this is these are the things, few simple things that I want you to remember on how to change your attitude and how to be able to walk a life where you're thankful, where you're walking in faith. You're not, you're not basing your life on what your feelings are. You're not basing your life on what things that happens around you, but you base your life according to God's word because God's word is not failing. God's word in Matthew, it says that heaven and earth will pass away, but God's word will remain the same attach your attitude attach your emotions your feelings according to what God's word says make God's word the standard for your life because that is the only thing that is strong enough to get you through what you're going that is the only thing that will be able to take that pain that sickness that loneliness that emptiness emptiness inside your heart and make you into a man and a woman after all God's own heart amen church are you blessed tonight come on I want you all to rise up on your feet right now